Okay, in this short lecture, we're going to talk about two things, the phases of the moon and eclipses. So what doesn't cause the phases of the moon? Um, these are the common answers. Um, the most common answers that people will say, most common incorrect, and, and a lot of people do get this incorrect, the earth shadow. That's what a lot of people are going to say at first. And, and the reason for that, they know that the Earth and the Moon are moving around and, you know, they see shadows and other things. So that, that, that's, a, that's their first guess. Uh, some other people say the sun shadow. I've heard that. And in a sense, that could be correct. Um, but I don't think what they, they meant it to be correct. What they meant it to be was correct. Uh, and then you will also see some people say things like clouds or something obscuring the, the moon. Um, but when when people say that, you could also ask them, can you see the moon during the day? And they're most likely going to say no. Um, so this it's just tied in together with the the group that doesn't really observe the sky and, you know, we have so many things going on, lots of people don't really pay attention to the sky. Um, so they don't even, they're not aware that, that you can see it during the day, and that could be that case. So let's talk about what what does cause the phases of the moon. So I built my own little model here. Um, you can see it next to these moons, pictures of moons. I took a racquetball, and, and I took uh, some white out, and I painted half of it white and then I put a little paper clip in it so you could rotate around and I, I took pictures of it in front of a piece of cardboard so and what I wanted to do was to show that if you look at this tennis this racquetball that's half painted white from different angles it looks different and I can make it look just like the different phases of the moon so in the upper left I'm showing you the white side of the racquetball and it looks just like a full moon okay and then you can see as I turn that racquetball a little bit so you can see a little bit of the blue that little bit of the blue is just like the little bit of the dark side of the moon that you can see in the next picture um, and and just so you know you can see the the non solar illuminated part of the moon um, because the the, the bright side of the earth sometimes can reflect and light up that part. And then here, I, the next one down, I have about a quarter of a moon. I try to match the pictures as close as possible. And then you can see a crescent moon, and um, it looks just the same. Okay, so I don't have to say it's some type of shadow on the moon that's causing these weird shapes. It's really just looking at a sphere that's half illuminated but I'm looking at it from different angles and the other common way to to observe these is to take a ball and shine a bright light on it and then look at it from different angles but this way you don't need you don't need a light or anything you just move the ball around okay so here I I try to make a diagram the yellow circle is the sun clearly not to scale the green circle is the earth and then this half dark, half light circle is the moon. And you'll notice that the light half is pointing towards the sun um, if the sun was really far away. So it doesn't quite work for my uh, quarter moon in the top there, but, but I think you get the idea. So that side's lit up because that's the side pointing towards the sun. Okay. Now, it if we're on the earth and we're looking at it to the when it's to the, in between the sun and the earth, we're looking at the dark side, the dark side of the, uh, the non-illuminated side uh, of the moon. And so then we see something that's very close to a new moon. I moved it a little off to the side so I'd have a picture of something, so just a black picture of nothing. It's very difficult to see the new moon because we can't see the lit side, and it occurs... Uh, on the daytime side of the Earth, so it's very bright outside. But the crescent moon is when you, you can also see it during, when it's a little off, then it's a lot easier to see during the day. 
because you can see that little bit of illuminated side. Uh, the, I've shown a quarter moon up here where you, we're in the Earth looking at the moon right at the line between the light side and the non-illuminated side and you, you get that picture right there. And then when the moon's on the back side, it, so the Earth's in between the moon and the sun, then we can see the whole illuminated side because it's like having uh, a car headlight behind us turned on and we're looking at something well, we can see pretty well because our light source is right behind us. Okay, so looking at this, you may see a problem. Well, shouldn't the Earth's shadow cause a problem then? Because look, in the in the full moon, we're right in the middle, okay. And for the new moon, the the moon's in the way. We wouldn't be able to see the sun. Very good point. But it turns out that doesn't happen. If you were to look at this picture from the side instead of the uh, the way I have it from the top, here I have this solid arrow represents the direction to the sun, and that represents the plane that the Earth orbits the sun. This dotted line that's tilted with the moon represents the plane that the moon rotates around the earth. So when we have a new moon as indicated in this picture, the moon does cause a shadow, but that shadow doesn't fall on the earth because the moon's not directly in line. So the, the orbital, the orbit of the moon around the earth is tilted with respect to the Earth's orbit around the Sun, so they never come, well they do, but they don't usually line up perfectly to cause this blocking case. Okay, but sometimes they do. Um, sometimes they do. Sometimes it works out such that the uh, all these three things line up. Now, so that would be when we'd have an eclipse. There's an important thing to think about when you have an eclipse. And I drew this picture here and it, it looks a little crazy. First, look, let's look at the... This is the sun, which is big. It's not a point object. And the green thing represents the Earth, or it could be the moon. It, it's, it's not important. The important thing is that we actually have two regions to consider. One region is a full shadow. You can't see the sun at all. If you follow that top bright dot dotted line from the sun and it hits the edge of the earth and it keeps going and then you start from the bottom of the sun and do the same thing that region in between those lines you can't see the sun at all you can imagine being in any location in between those lines and no light from the sun would reach you because it hit the earth so that would be a full shadow now take these tiny dotted lines and I drew it going from the bottom of the sun to the top of the earth and vice versa and this creates a region where I've drawn a little person where it's a partial shadow so look at that where that person is he can't see the bottom of the sun but he can see the top so that earth is just partially blocking the sun not completely okay so we have those two things um, and this is really important when we look at solar eclipses you see, when the moon sh when the, the moon does this, the region of full shadow that falls on the Earth is actually very small. So m many people, very few people, would actually see the full solar eclipse. But the other region is much larger that gets a partial eclipse. Okay. So when do you have a, a solar eclipse and when do you have a lunar eclipse? Um, when you have a new moon, you could you could have a solar eclipse if it's lined up properly, but it'd have to be a new moon, okay? So the moon would have to be in between the sun and the earth, and that would create a new moon. And then if the orbits are lined up also, then you could have a solar eclipse. And so here I have a, a picture of a solar eclipse, and if you're in the complete shadow, then this is what you would see during the instant that they, they cover up. It's actually kind of... Uh, very odd that the angular size of the moon is just about exactly the ex same angular size as the sun so it perfectly covers it up. In this case you can actually see the outer gaseous areas of the sun 
Um, and, and this is why solar eclipses are important so people can say that because it, it blocks out. Now, to get a lunar eclipse, you would have to have a full moon for the exact op reason, opposite reason. You want the moon to move in the Earth's shadow. The Earth is much bigger, and so its shadow is much larger. And the moon can completely fit inside the full shadow of the Earth. And so this does two things. One, the whole moon's covered up. And two, anywhere on the Earth that's dark, you can see that. You can see the whole thing's covered up. Whereas when there's a solar eclipse, if you're not in the partial eclipse or total eclipse area, you don't, you don't notice anything. But everyone notices the lunar eclipse. It doesn't matter where on the Earth you are as long as you can see the moon. Now, the picture I have here is a picture of a lunar eclipse. And you'll notice that the moon looks red. It's not completely blacked out. The reason is that light from the sun um, passes through the Earth's atmosphere. And this acts basically like a lens. The sky is blue. And, and the reason is that our air tends to scatter blue light more. So we see a lot of the blue light. And that leaves the red light to pass through. So the red light passes through, it bends in the Earth's atmosphere, and so it bends in towards the moon, and, and that red light illuminates the moon, making it red. If you didn't know anything about lunar eclipses, this would probably be a bad sign. But now you know, so you don't have to worry.